Hello and welcome to Service Ops See It Live. My name is Cody Dean and I'm a solution engineer here at BMC. Today we'll be walking through the convergence of AI service management and AI operations management, aka Service Ops. Jason will be fielding questions in the chat and I will reach out to you after the after the session through the platform if you have any additional questions. While you may, while you may have not seen the term Service Ops used before, it's not a new concept. There's a likelihood that you're already doing Service Ops today. When you bring everybody in the room together to solve an outage, that traditional IT war room experience, and everyone is looking in their separate systems collaborating, that's Service Ops. What BMC enables is the progression and the maturity of that concept. As you start centralizing data sources, such as events, incidents, and changes, you start getting a more holistic picture of your services. This centralization is key to things like efficiently being able to automate repeat scenarios and accurately identify the impact of outages. As you start getting more mature, in the as you start getting more intelligent in your maturity, you start looking at the longer term, planning three, six, eight months into the future, and you start using things like AI and ML and historical data to plan accordingly for those changes. Instead of setting baselines, you start getting alerted when the when the services start not acting normal through things like predictive analytics. Finally, in the event of a disruption, you bring all of the teams together in a digital experience through the communication channel of their choice. This creates a digital war room experience. All of the data that's needed is centralized for them to figure out and resolve the problem quickly. So in the room, Jason just opened up a poll. As we talk through service ops, we'll take in, take, in, take a second and think about where your organization is at in this maturity path today and let us know. So what we're gonna show today is how service ops can help manage and prevent service disruptions and how automation can help drive efficiencies. This isn't the only use cases for service ops. There's the, the predictive future outage that we talked about as well as a lot of DevOps use cases. And if you wanna talk more about that, uh, feel free to reach out to us after this event. So the scenario that I'm gonna walk through is a typical service outage. We have a service that we call our media service and that's experiencing an issue. We're gonna collect, tool, collect data from multiple tools into BMC Helix and reduce them into a single actionable item called a situation. This situation will automatically create the ITSM incident that we can correlate with users calling into service management and give them visibility into the potential root cause. Finally, we're gonna execute an automation to resolve the issue, allowing us to close the situation quickly and restore the service. As a service owner or even an executive within the company, I wanna know the health of my services from a high level. And we can do that with BMC Helix dashboards. So what we have on the screen here is the overall health of my environment. And I can see that because the, the media service is not at 100%, there's something going on. I also have the ability to check out you know, the number of open incidents, the number of events that are coming in, and the historical trend of both of them right from within a single pane of glass. Let's click into the media service and see exactly what's going on. Going into the media service brings me into service monitoring, which is our AI ops component of Helix. This is my view into everything that is around that business service that we care about. So this is the events that are coming in, the incidents that are coming in, and any open changes that are associated with it. You can see on the health dash, on the health timeline, things like the incidents, things like the events that have came in and exactly when they happened. So as you're trying to figure out the timeline of the event and the scenario that's happening, you can quickly identify the issues. We've already collapsed down these events into a situation, which we'll talk more about in a moment, but we can also look at the CI topology and see what this, state, what this business service looks like and as well as the impacted nodes. So the first view I get is a filtered view of just the impacted nodes. You'll see that this web FE01 is the probable cause. It's the one that's causing the most issues in the environment. But if we clear the filter, you can see the complexity of this business service. This is an AWS multi-tier application, and you'll see that it's not just the WebFE01, there's more going on, but I can see the downstream effects of that individual change. Now, how do we get this business service into the Helix platform? Well, we can use the traditional discovery solutions that we offer, 
But in this case, we're bringing that business service and that topology over from Dynatrace. So through our intelligent integration platform, we're not only able to pull in event data, but we can also pull in event and topology data, creating that single pane, that monitor or monitor in an easy for, in, in an easy to use fashion. So if we look at our Dynatrace connection here, we can see it's flowing into BMC, but we can see that we're pulling in not only events, but the topology from that. Dynatrace is an APM solution that ties into the application. It knows how it's interconnected. So we're able to pull that information in and use it to create those services. Back in service monitoring, if we go to the overview tab, we can get, again, another view of my, my entire estate and how all my services are acting. But you'll notice that we have an item here that we call a situation. So a situation is a group of events that happened and they're grouped by a, either a policy, either a machine learning or a policy-based uh, activity. So in this case, we have a machine learning type situation. But if you had a particular scenario in your environment that you wanted to keep track of and you didn't want to rely on machine learning, such as a lockout or a security incident, you could create a policy around that to make sure it happens every time a set of incident or set of events come into the system. If we go into the situation, we can see that we have all of the 13 events that are associated with it all in all in a single view. And you'll see that these come these are coming in from different areas. So I have AWS events, I have Nagios events, I have those Dynatrace events that we just talked about, all being correlated into a single pane of glass. We'll also notice that we have an incident associated with it. So we took this high level scenario that happened in our environment, created the situation, and now we have an ITSM incident that our service management team can work on resolution from the service management component. So if I click here, it will take me into the ITSM incident within Helix ITSM. So within Helix ITSM, we have that single item that is now related to those multiple events and, and operations management. And we give the service management team visibility into this IT, into the operations management and service monitoring process through this ticket. We'll notice that we have things like the service health down here that shows that the media service is impacted. So as you have customers that are potentially calling and reporting new issues, if you go in there and select the impacted service, you can quickly identify and see exactly what's going on and know that there's an issue with the media service. You can communicate that with the customer or you can turn around and give them access to this incident and they can check and keep an update on that service as well on their own. If we scroll down, we'll notice that we have a couple of related items. We have the configuration items that are associated with it. So we can see that the media service is impacted. We have these three nodes that are impacted. And we also have related items that are impacted or that are associated with this incident. So we have uh, you know, uh, a related incident that's media service is not responding. And in a moment, we'll take a look at how we can correlate multiple user reported incidents into this single parent incident and help track the user reported calls that are coming in th either through phone calls or through the chat bot or through self-service or anything like that directly from within this incident as well. We also have a change request that's been created by the Helix platform using our intelligent automation component, which is an automation broker that I'll cover more in a moment. Uh, but it also, so we actually have a potential fix that is already exists to be able to go in there and say, hey, let's resolve this incident. Now, if we have customers that are calling in, we need a way to be able to relate that back to this particular incident and this outage that's occurring. You know, there's a chance that if somebody's logging in on Monday morning and the service is down, you're going to get a flood of mess, flood of phone calls, flood of chatbot messages, flood of user reported issues that this that this particular media service is having an outage. To help with that, we can leverage our real time incident correlation which uses AI and ML in the background to correlate these events together into a single into a single outage that we can associate back with this particular uh, particular incident. Might have to log back out. Uh, but anyways, so the the um, the real time incident correlation 
takes and uses AI and ML. I think I timed out. It uses AI and ML in the back end to correlate those events together and give you visibility into all of the re results of the events that are coming in based on the description and summary of those incidents. So give me one second. I'll try to log back in and see if that resolves it. We also have things like the proactive problem management that lets you create jobs that will actually go and do more advanced correlation as well and really help leverage the power of the BMC platform to manage those incidents as they're coming in. Now, we noticed that we had a change request that was associated with the particular issue that was occurring. How do you manage the users that are reporting in calling issues and reporting them through the chatbot? How do you manage that stream of new incidents that are coming in? And how do you keep the service desk from continuously getting flooded as there's a known issue going on? Through Helix self-service, we have the ability to do things like a broadcast message to the user. So if they're coming in through the self-service portal to report a new issue, you can have a banner presented to them and says, hey, the media service is not responding. We have known issue going on. Let's go ahead and check back in you know, one hour and 15 minutes, but also be able to click into this back to that parent ticket that we talked about that's associated back to the service monitoring component and let you, you know, kind of do self-service and say, okay, do I want to really open up a new ticket or do I want to wait, just keep an eye on this instead of bugging the service desk for more uh, information, just keep an eye on the, the status of my service and wait for it to come back up. Now, this is if I'm coming through the self-service portal, but what if I'm coming through and wanting to chat with the service desk and I don't have that visibility into the self-service portal, I can use our chat bot and get that same visibility through Microsoft Teams, through Slack, through that omni-channel communication of our choice, like I talked about in the maturity model, and say, you know, as a user, I get instant visibility that the media service is currently having an issue. And again, I can either chat with the chat bot or a service agent and request an update, I could log an additional ticket against that if I want to, or I could simply check back in, 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 a, in a little bit, see if the issue's been resolved yet. So back in service monitor, back in service monitoring, we had a change request also associated with the, with the situation. And you'll see that we have an automation that's available for that. If I click on the automation, I have the I have the ability, you notice I have one automation tied to it. And we'll talk about what policies look like in a moment. But you'll see I have a sit, I have an automation that the status is awaiting. So that means that it's waiting for a change to be approved in the ITSM side. So this means that any automation that occurs and is triggered through intelligent automation, you have the ability to define if you want to have that create a change request or not making sure that all your T's are dot your T's are crossed and your I's are dotted at the end of the day when the auditors look at your change logs. I also have the ability to request a new automation if an automation doesn't already exist in the platform. I can request a new automation, fill this information out, and it will send the request over to the automation team to fulfill and make it a lot easier to, to kind of facilitate that process of requesting new automations from your automation team. Let's take a look at what this a change approval looks like. So I'm going to switch personas to the change approver, and we're going to come back over to, we're going to go into digital workplace and show what that looks like from that context. So I'm a change approver. I have, can have digital workplace on my phone. I can have it through a web browser. Again, I can interact with it through our chat bot. But we'll notice that we have a little notification here that says there's a known issue, and we have a resolution available for it. I've likely been pulled in as a business owner to this issue that's ongoing. I have the ability to see the notification that was created through Slack. So if I had a Slack, if I had, if I was living in Slack and I was working in Slack, I have the ability to check the notification that was generated through Slack and be, be notified that there's a new issue going on. But from within Digital Workplace, I can come in and either click into the change request if I want more information, if I want to do things like impact analysis on the change to make sure it's not going to affect any other business services. Or I can simply click approve 
and it will go out there and trigger the automation within intelligent automation and run the automation to fix the resolution of the scenario that's ongoing. So now that I've ran that, if I come back to my situation view again, let's refresh the screen. You'll notice that my, my automation now has a green check mark. If I had multiple automations tied to this particular scenario and this green check mark did not resolve the issue, I could have another one in there that maybe is a restart of the entire server or you know another more impacting change that, that you can define and you could trigger those automations as well if you need to. So you can have multiple automations tied to a single uh, event source. If we come in, to the scenario, we've called the we've called the users. We've said, "Hey, is the service back up and running?" They've said, "Yes." We've confirmed ourselves that we're able to access it again. Uh, traditionally, one of the heavy uh, lifts of a scenario that goes on in your environment is the cleanup process. So, having to go through and close out all of the events and all of the other applications that you're looking in, all of the user requested incidents that have came in, so on and so forth. We can come in and close that from a single source within our service monitoring component. So if I come in, confirm with the customer that the issue has been resolved, I can close the situation, customer confirm, click yes. And now what it will do is close out all of the events that are associated with this scenario, all of the incidents that are associated with this scenario, and it will clean everything up for me. If we come back to the overview tab now, We'll notice that the media service is now at 100%. If we looked at that overall dashboard, the, the service would be at 100%. Everything's golden. The users are able to access the service once again. Now let's take a look at what that automation looked like in the background briefly to kind of give you an understanding of what that automation broker means when I, when I say that. So let's go into intelligent automation. and look at the individual automation that ran. So automation, intelligent automation is an automation broker, meaning that BMC Helix platform is an open-ended platform. We can consume data from third-party applications, but we can also use the tool of your choice to actually perform these remedial tasks. In my case, I was using a, a TrueSight orchestration runbook. We have out-of-the-box connectors for server automation, for Ansible, for API calls, for cloud providers. So really it's whatever tool you wanna to use to, to facilitate these actions in your environment, you're, you're able to do so as long as they have connectivity points to them. Let's take a look at one of these events that we looked at or one of these incidents that we looked at. And let's look at what the policy has in the inside kind of the, the guts of the policy. So inside of a policy, I have the event trigger, which means that I'm able to map this to events that are coming into my platform. And you can make these as generic as you'd like or as defined as you'd like. I recommend keeping them generic, tying them to generic automations so you don't need to have a, a bunch of sprawl around your automations that are in your environment. Uh, and you can do so by leveraging information within the events. So the event information is all brought in as metadata that you can then pass to automation tools through parameters or through JSON if it's an API call. I can trigger it automatically or manually. So if I have an event like a disk space cleanup that I wanna trigger automatically whenever it comes into my environment, I have the ability to select automatic and it will do so when that event shows up. Even with an automatic event, you can still have that go through the change management process and either have it go to a person for approval or go through some sort of manu automatic approval phase so you still have those artifacts in ITSM. Underneath action configuration, this is where we're tying it to our automations that exist in my environment. So if I wanted to create a server automation or server automation job, or if I wanted to run a runbook and orchestration or use an API call to an API endpoint, I can define that here, pull in that information from the, from the event pipe it into a parameter in that call, and now I have an automation created. Traditionally, if you were doing operations management and you were wanting to do a lot of automations around the events that are coming in, you'd have to do things like pipe, pipe or uh, parse an SNMP trap, create the automation mapping, and then actually fire that automation, which might be a script or something along that lines. 
and it was extremely time consuming. Uh, with intelligent automation, it brings that time down from weeks or months to you know minutes uh, to create these automation policies. We also have the ability to define what that that change request looks like, so the priority and that's that, that type of thing, and the savings around it. So this is important for the automation teams to be able to define what value they're bringing to the organization. So I can say this job normally takes us two hours to complete, and it's $240 to complete this task on average. And you can define that, and we'll look at what that looks like in a moment on the dashboard so you can really show the value of the solution. So next up, let's take a look at what that value looks like. So if we go over to the reports tab, we have the Helix Automation, Helix Intelligent Automation Value Dashboard, and this is your visibility into your service ops and your automation processes. This tells us that we've had three unique automations run 20 times in the past two days. If we go out and look at like the last 30 days, we have a lot more data available to us and we can see that we've saved a total of 1.58 days and over $5,000 by just automating these three processes in my environment. You could, you could imagine as you start growing the number of automations available, as well as the number of runs that you do. So the longer it runs, the more value you can provide. This, these numbers will show significant value in your organization around your service ops and your automation uh, programs. With that being said, I'm going to switch back over to the presentation real quick and talk about some opportunities that we have, and then I'll answer a couple of questions that we have come in. Uh, first of all, we have our, if you liked what you saw today and you want to dive a little bit deeper into it, we have a unique opportunity at BMC where you can leverage our CTRI Learn environment, which is a browser-based real, I mean, it was just like I was walking through today, but you're guided with kind of an AI and some videos and some tips along the way around our operations management with AI ops capabilities. And we have that on our website or there's the QR code there on the screen. We also have our service and operations management exhibit that's booth that's uh, staffed by some of the finest in BMCs, if you want to go over there and talk with them around what we saw today and how service ops can bring you value in your organization. And then during the keynote, there was the preview of the predictive service ops. We have staff in the innovation labs that are uh, that are there to talk to you about what the future of this program is and how we can make it even more intelligent and help you push towards that maturity, that intelligent maturity that we talked about at the beginning. So I did have a question in the chat from uh, David Morgan, he asked, I see, your, I see your feed from Dynatrace today as Dynatrace pulled from the internet and on-prem connector, then pushed back to the internet through BMC SaaS. Uh, that is probably more of a um, project management question. I don't know if, uh, I think Seth or, or Jason will probably connect with you, David, after the, after the discussion. Um, and then as far as the maturity, um, I think most of the organizations that we talk with uh, when they're talking about where they're at on the maturity process and maturity model, that poll that we kind of pulled the audience with, a lot of them are somewhere in between, uh, kind of level one and level two. They might be doing some predictive analytics, but there's a lot of opportunity in order to increase the efficiency and value in service ops. So I did I did confirm that Seth will Seth will follow up. Seth Perkins will follow up with you after the session around the uh, Dynatrace question, David. Thank you, I appreciate that. With that being said, I thank everyone for attending. Hopefully this showed you the value of service ops and how it can help drive efficiencies within your organization. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the event. We have a lot more great sessions coming up. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to myself or the staffs in the, in the, in the exhibit booths. Thank you. Thank you.